going on everyone? George here from bemoregeorge.co.uk, your home for photographic awesomeness. And I'm here today with another Photoshop Basics tutorial, and this one is all about the crop tool. The crop tool is probably one of the most frequently used tools in Photoshop, but it is also probably one of the most misunderstood or at least not used to its full potential tools in Photoshop. There are loads of hidden features inside the crop tool that most people simply don't know exist. Most people just use it to crop. Some people might know how to maintain the aspect ratio while they're cropping, but most people probably don't know about a couple of these really awesome yet very hidden features in the crop tool. So I've got this photo up here of Josh Dunn from 21 Pilots. I already know that I'm gonna crop this image square. Uh, but I'm going to show you the tools that are hidden within the crop tool so that you can see some of the other things that you can do with it. This shot was originally shot for a magazine, which is why Josh is placed all the way over to the right and why there's so much empty space on the left. For my portfolio and things like that, I want to crop it, and I know I'm going to crop it square just because that's the general look that suits this image. But using some of these tools you might come to something totally different that you can use with your cropping and let me show you what these are so first let's activate the crop tool and you can do that by either selecting it over here on the menu the the tools menu over here or just hitting c on your keyboard and when you do that it highlights the image with the cropping boundaries around you and I think most people probably know that you just simply you can just simply drag things around ah, and you can see one of the little tools popping up um, you can drag things around to select what you want to crop one of the things you can do is if you hold down the shift key when you're in the corner and then drag in it's going to maintain the aspect ratio for you like I said I think most people probably get that and understand that I mean you just hold down the shift key drag from a corner and it's gonna maintain your aspect ratio that's very handy if you want to keep the same aspect ratio when you crop but there's so much more to the crop tool and you can see one of the things on already because I use this quite a bit if you go up to the crop tool in the upper bar here it now has a drop down and there's loads of different overlays that you can place on the crop tool to help you with your compositional rules so you've got the rule of thirds which is going to give you a grid showing you where all the different thirds of the image intersect and as you know you probably ideally want something on one of those intersection points from just here if i were to crop josh maintain the aspect ratio see that's putting him more into the middle which is not ideal he's actually pretty good and actually if I were to drag over here maybe bring it up just a little bit get his eye over there on the third that's actually probably a really good crop but because there's nothing else going on in the photo I don't really want that so I'm gonna not do that but that's the rule of thirds overlay then you have a grid which is just a simple grid um, there's really not much to that one Diagonal, which gives you some diagonal lines for your compositional rules. This is really good for landscapes. If you've got, especially landscapes with like mountains or buildings or something with lots of different heights on it, you want to put different points of interest around on those intersecting points. You've also got the triangle, which again is really good for landscapes, but it's also really good for scenes with multiple people in it or multiple points of interest. And you could put somebody or something on this intersection and then put somebody or something else of interest down on this intersection. Um, it's, it's, it's up to you and it depends on what you're cropping, but this tool is also there. And then you've got the golden ratio. Oh, sorry. Yeah, golden ratio, which is based on a Fibonacci sequence, but it's, I don't tend to use this one much. If I'm going to use something based on Fibonacci, it's going to be Fib, the, the golden spiral, which is based on the Fibonacci sequence. If you don't know what Fibonacci is, I would recommend Googling it because it's one of the most fascinating um, number sequences in the world. And it appears in nature naturally, and it's, it's really a mind-blowing um, number sequence. So Fibonacci. 
So the Fibonacci, the golden spiral is based on a Fibonacci sequence. So I've shown you the different overlays, but there's also more hidden within these uh, overlays. And you can see here, there's a thing called cycle overlay and cycle orientation. Well, if you've got one of these up and you hold down shift and O, it's going to cycle through the different orientations for that overlay. So right now we've got the golden spiral up and we can flip it around and we can get to one that roughly lands on Josh's eyes, which would be this one. And so if we were going to crop Josh to fit for his eye to be on there, it's not going to work out very well. We bring this all the way down here. And actually, that's a pretty good crop. If you follow the spiral around, it starts in his eye, it goes around to his other eye, it brings you down to the drumstick, and then around and over. Ideally, we'd want more stuff of interest over here, particularly down here, because that's right where the golden spiral is going to. The other ones, so you've also got different ones for the other overlay. So within the triangle, you'd also have this, if you notice, it's different from the last time. If you hit Shift and O, it's going to move it around for you. And then if you hit O, you just cycle through them all. So there's no different ones for this one. There is for the triangle. The golden ratio, there is none. Fibonacci, I've shown you. Rule of thirds, there's not going to be any additional ones. Grid, not going to be any additional ones. So, I mean, that's it. It's really just a triangle and the golden spiral that have even more hidden subsets with them, within them. But that's not even it, because that's not terribly hidden. Granted, this is something new to Photoshop CC. This wasn't available in CS5 or CS6. This, this has only become available in CC, I believe. If I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments, but I'm pretty sure that's correct. This next thing is so hidden that I think um, Adobe should let you know about it, because it's extraordinarily powerful. And what, I, what this is, is so let's just ignore the overlays for a minute. Let me get rid of the overlays. If I wanted to crop this image and I wanted to maintain the aspect ratio and I hold down the shift key and I drag, you can see the center point of my image is moving. And that's fine generally, but sometimes you don't want that to happen. If you were to hold down the alt key or the option key, and then do that same drag, you can see the center point is not moving. It is keeping the center of our image the same. Now that is extremely powerful and you can do it maintaining the aspect ratio by holding down the option key and the shift key at the same time and dragging. And now what you're doing is maintaining the aspect ratio but you're not changing the center of the photo. And man, I got to tell you, that is some powerful stuff. Like, I can't tell you how many times I wish I would have known that oops, that was there because it's so hidden. For, uh, Adobe, I, I can't find where you would find out that that even exists. And when you got an overlay on, so say we've got uh, Fibonacci on here. Uh, let's bring up the golden spiral. Let's get the one that's closest to Josh's eye. Now, if we were to maintain the center point of our photo, our crop gets t completely different than it was before. Not saying this is any better, but if you've got a landscape and there's certain aspects you really want to keep in the photo, by keeping the center point the same, that's going to be very useful. And it's so hidden. It's just holding down the Alt key while you're doing it. So let's get this back up to normal because there's only a couple more things to show you about the crop tool. So I've shown you the overlays. I've shown you how to maintain the aspect ratio while you're cropping. And I've shown you how to maintain the center point while you're cropping. There's one other quick thing. And up here you can set an aspect ratio that you want. I always find this a little bit tedious because you have to know sort of exactly what it is you want to put in when you do it. If you hit the drop down, there's a bunch of options down here. I personally don't like using that up here. If you just put your cursor in the crop area and either right click or hit control and click, it brings up that same set of options for you here. And this is very useful. If, if there's multiple layers and you've got a different aspect ratio of a layer on front, you can use that front image aspect ratio by default. You can use one by one, which is square. 
four by five, which is eight by 10. It's got pretty much your standard crop ratios in here, which are very handy. Cause if you want to make this image into an eight by 10, I would just click this. It's going to give me the ratio for an eight by 10. I could rotate it, which is what I would need to do for this really, unless I wanted to send it like this, which isn't horrible. Um, you could do it as 16 by nine, which is going to be your widescreen format. Um, that looks pretty good like that. I mean, they're all here, so you can do any aspect ratio you want just in a couple of clicks. And that's pretty much it. I mean, the, the crop tool is one of the most used tools in Photoshop, but I think it's also one of the most underutilized tools as well. And there's lots of tools hidden within it that are going to make your life a lot easier. So have a play around with it and see how much it's going to help you crop because it's so much time saving right here that nobody ever really knew existed. But anyways, if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be doing one of these every week at the very least. If you like the video, please give it a big fat thumbs up. Go check out the website, www.bemoregeorge.co.uk. Keep shooting, be awesome, and I'll see you later.